Welcome to the creative community. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is artist Doug Oesaka. Doug, welcome. Thank you very much, David. Good to see you again. Yeah, it's good to see you. And it's been a while. Um, <laughs> you were, I think, the very first guest that I really? ever had on the, on the show, whatever that was, like 14 or 15 years ago. Oh God, so yeah. I'm glad to have you back here so early in, in the reboot of Creative Community. I'm honored. I yeah. appreciate it. Thanks. Well, sure. you know, even back then, you were an accomplished artist who was working all the time, doing so much stuff, and you still are. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty busy still. Yeah, what, I mean, what? It, just sort of an overview for our conversation. What is it about doing what you do that keeps you going? Well, for me, ever since I was a little kid, I had a really um, big passion for the arts. I used to just draw constantly. We, I grew up in the Central Valley in Fresno. Um, not a lot to do out there. We live pretty rural area and so I just used to draw a lot and then at that time on TV there was a guy named John Nagy mm -hmm. he used to be on TV um, and so I used to follow that and then my parents got me a kit uh, John Nagy, John Nagy. how to draw and so I got <laughs> one of those and played with that and I don't know just making things was just a uh, just intrigued me it challenged me it, it really um, just provided a fire for me to just do things mm -hmm. and then it continued through college um, and I just stuck with it and it kind of went from when I was at UCSB here it went to um, painting I got this fortunate enough to study with Bill Rohrbach out there a great painter also uh, William Dole mm -hmm. and then some printmaker well, and then also uh, Cheryl Bowers um, and and Gary Brown and a bunch of different people so it, they provide a really good foundation for me um, and that just carried on um, throughout the rest of my life um, and then I was fortunate enough to start teaching, which kind of, I think, really energized me even more to share my passion with the students, you know, at there, out there at uh, Laguna Blanca. So. Right, yeah. So that, I mean, that must be an interesting experience. So high school students, they don't know a lot, but they got a lot of energy and enthusiasm, right? Well, yeah, I teach, um, the, I have been teaching fifth and sixth through 12th grade, right, so it's okay. a really big spread. And it's really exciting just to see the energy of the kids. Right. And we're pretty fortunate out at Laguna because we have a really, small class size. Most of the classes are 20 or less. Sometimes I've had a class as small as five. Or wow, three. that must be really, great. Yeah, it's been really fun. And um, we have a small gene pool, but we have a really uh, a talented base of kids, mm -hmm. especially the ones that um, seek out the arts because they pursue it You know, in, in their off times. They're usually going on YouTube or, or following an anime person or an illustrator or a filmmaker or what, what have you on um, the internet and then it just transfers over into the classroom and you know I, I get to pick up on that fire and kind of teach but also just mostly just nudge them into different directions and to uh, work on their strengths and to pursue some of the things that you might want to strengthen for a career in the arts or just just for their own you know, right. fun and you, you teach across the range of drawing painting mm -hmm. drawing painting that. printmaking um, filmmaking for the kids also it's for on the filmmaking part, it's mostly um, just how to tell a visual story, mm -hmm. so just the basic structure. And yet, I mean, when I when I think of your work, I think of assemblage. Mm -hmm. I think of, of, of made things um, could be on paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes it's 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 metal wood. Um, how did that? How did you veer off from from drawing as a kid to, to doing that as your kind of specialty? Um, well, actually, <laughs> we used to just make a lot of little toys oh. or little things out in the country. So I remember, uh, although I lost it, one of my treasured things that my dad made for us one time was a slingshot for me and my brother. He got this uh, these Y-shaped branches and carved and made a slingshot of the uh, part where you put the rock in was, I think, part of an old shoe, you know, the tongue of the shoe, and then he had some old... Uh, tires that he cut up for the bands, you know, inner tube uh, rubber. And so, I don't know, just that whole craft part. Um, that just fascinated It just intrigued me, yeah. yeah. And then, you know, we used to carve up 
dirt clods and make these little cities, alien cities, and then, you know, as boys, and then we destroy it with dirt clods. And, <laughs> sure. And, 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 you know, and stuff. <laughs> the um, goes around, goes around. <laughs> yeah, I know. And so that was the whole thing is just, uh, I think that early basis in childhood of just making things with my hands, I just really appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, and it was something I think that was a lot more prevalent in, in that our generation, you know, you don't see it as much now since it's a lot more digital. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but yeah, there was just that more tactile sense of, of making things. Yeah, I can know. remember taking pieces of wood and just driving nails oh, yeah. into it. Yeah, you know, just to make a clump yeah. of something or yes. other. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I think that whole, well, I think it's an extension from our parents, you know, the can do, you know, the right, depression right. people. The, the and, depression people. Yeah, yeah. we'll make something, we'll. We make this last and you know, repair it if we have to. And mm -hmm. it's just that whole mindset that was transferred indirectly to us as kids. And, right. Yeah. And so why haven't we transferred that onto our own kids? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think they, you know, just a whole nother landscape out yeah. there, you know. And, uh, but there, I think it's going, swinging back. There's, you know, a lot more do-it-yourself things and maker's hubs in town and all around. Um, I think there's that whole... Etsy, you know, mm -hmm. there's that whole... So it is still there. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. It's that whole love of making things or, or yeah, with your hands. Well, that we, I, I'm reminded of, of the last time that I worked with you, which was for uh, Long Story Short, which was an exhibition in, um, at Westmont back in October through January. October 2016, January 2017. Mm -hmm. I remember having a poetry reading of uh, pieces inspired by your work. Um, and we have a little video um, of that. It's about a minute and forty seconds. So sure. let's let's roll the video if, if we could. And um, we're not going to necessarily reference specifically uh -huh. what's happening in the video, but um, you know, tell us a little bit about. Uh, so I was fortunate enough to be approached by um, Judy Larson out there, and um, she um, asked if I wanted to have a show there. And I said yes. I was I jumped at it. I was a little intimidated because it's a large space. Mm -hmm. um, the first part, actually, some of these images you see here, the blurry images that I shot, <laughs> it's this long 30-foot hallway that leads into the space itself. And in there, I had a lot of stuff from my childhood, from when I was a little I kid, I had that, family yeah. photos and stuff, and then stuff from college. This is some, a painting I did in college, but um, a lot of my college artwork and stuff that I did in high school, and that was a lead into my current work, um, which was, you know, basically a lot of work from there and from after college on up until the present day. And Chris Rupp did a great job on doing, setting up the show, constructing the, the um, shelving and everything and painting and hanging the show with Judy. And uh, I just thought they did a marvelous uh, job. They did a superb job. Yeah, it was really fun. I mean, there's a lot of work there. I think there was 90 something pieces there. Mm -hmm. And then there was also a little small satellite show that we had at um, Laguna Blanca and I had a 22 collages there. Um, but it showed a little bit of everything, um, the assemblage work, the collage work, um, some paintings, um, a little bit of everything. And um, it was a basic, kind of like a mid-career survey, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was well received and I really enjoyed and appreciated the uh, poetry that you guys. Well, you, you know, I've always said that your work is so poetic. It, it, it seems to, it's lyrical, it, 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 it's image based. There's these crazy juxtapositions that, um, you know, that seem to inspire poetry. Mm -hmm. oh, so, I mean, I think you have a really poetic sensibility. Oh, thanks. Um, I, you know, looking through there too, I mean, you're Japanese American. Mm -hmm. We were talking a little bit about that before um, the camera started rolling. That's, that weaves its way in there into your work consistently, wouldn't you say? Quite a bit. I think it was just um, osmosis as a kid. Um, you know, there was a, a ton of um, Japanese handicrafts and arts that we did have in the home. We had a couple scrolls that belonged to my grandparents that we had in the house, one with a crane. And I, I just used to study that for you know hours on end when mm. I was a kid, and I used to try and emulate some of the brush strokes and calligraphy that I'd see on there. And then also we had, a, which is traditional in a lot of Japanese homes, they have the um, uh, display cases with Japanese dolls in there. It could be you know, kabuki actors mm -hmm. or, or generals or a lot of times geishas. And so I just was amazed at the craftsmanship of those. And then a lot of times it'd be the uh, little carved dolls from Japan that we had all around the house. And so there was a lot of, um, a lot of things that, that just kind of 
seeped into my mm -hmm. mindset mm -hmm. and then um, later came out, you know, and then also I, sometimes there was a, there was after college or during college too, there was a more conscious attempt to um, showcase some of my heritage, my, mm -hmm. my cultural heritage yeah. and stuff like that. Well, you know, I grew up in, in Sacramento, so I know there mm. can be a dissonance between, um, you know, Japan and the Central Valley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, was that a kind of productive uh, friction or did that not really come into play? Mm, well, it, growing up in the Valley, it's really slow paced at the time and we were very far removed from, my, you know, for my early years, I think our nearest neighbor was a half mile away or something okay. like that. And so we were pretty much isolated. Your farm family, yeah. basically. Yeah. So it was just my, my brothers and sisters, you know, growing up. And um, so we just used to make stuff. And, you know, our grandparents used to come in. We used to have family occasions and cousins used to come in. And um, it was during those times that I think they just reinforced the, um, the bond of the family or heritage and such. You know, we'd have a lot of Japanese food. And, mm -hmm. um, but... I think, yeah, it's just, it just, I think like most people, it just kind of seeps into you, whether you acknowledge it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it's just the way I think we're brought up, you know, it's an extension of the grandparents, parents, and their traditions, and how they are passed on to their children, and, mm -hmm. and that became a part of me also. Right. So. Yeah. Well, let's. We, we got some some images from several different shows. So th th I want to move next to um, the the gray space show. This mm -hmm. was in 2018. Um, and can you talk a little bit about what what what, what this collection? Meant sure. To? Well, actually, that show was going to be a little bit earlier in the year, mm -hmm. uh, but then we had the uh, the fires and the flood. And in fact, I was supposed to have a show with um, Eric Reel. He couldn't even get to his studio at the time because of the evacuations and everything. So the show, Charlene Brody was the owner at the time, and she canceled the show and uh, for good reason. And then so we would reschedule later. And so I went later on um, in the year, and I decided to do uh, small collages. And so what I did, I got these two, um, a bunch of paint swatches. I think they were about two and a half by three and a half or something like that. And um, they had little names on there, and I just decided to make a bunch of those. And I think I made 101 or 102 of those wow. things in about nine months or whatever. And um, a lot of them were based on the name of the specific color. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot more playful and a lot more color-based than a lot of my normal work. And so it was just really fun. It was a fun exercise. And then I also wanted to uh, give back to the... Uh, community as to what was happening you right. know, with flood and fire. And so uh, Charlene and I um, made it so that the sales of those pieces, um, a third of it was going to go to, uh, I think we had Direct Relief of Santa Barbara, mm -hmm. and then the uh, Bucket Brigade and some other fire organiza fire fighters organization also that we donated to um, after the show, which was really nice. And um, it was a fun show. So basically, so you got these little moments of hope in the midst of this kind of catastrophe. Yeah, it was. Well, you know, I mean, I, I don't think anybody in Santa Barbara was not touched. You know, right. they, somebody knew of somebody, or um, so it was. You know, quite a uh, devastating time for a community, and um, I think the community really rallied together as mm -hmm. um, a body to support each other. And um, I just wanted to be a part of that. In fact, one of our kids, well, many of our kids at um, Laguna Blanca um, helped with the Bucket Brigade and a lot of their families were affected also. Um, and then uh, we had one student who did Santa Barbara Strong uh, designed a t-shirt for okay. that, uh, Sophia Martin, yes, she uh, did that, which was really nice. And um, I think we had a fundraiser at Soho also, but um, yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the next uh, bit of work we have is from the Architectural Foundation, mm -hmm. um, and you've also curated a show for them. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, take a look at, at some of those images and um, tell us a little bit about it. The Architectural Foundation was really fun. I got to work with Rocia out there, and uh, she, she just said pretty much you can do whatever you wanted, and so I decided to do a collage show, and it was... I hung it pretty much like some of the work was hung at the Westmont show, but like I do in my studio, I usually clip them up and then pin them up to the wall to mm -hmm. observe them and, and, and maybe further work on them and think about the piece. And so we had a, just a bunch of newer collages and you know pretty much everything was done within the past five years and some had, 
had just been finished. Um, I also decided to work a larger, so I had one that, some that were about, I don't know, you know, 20 something by 30 or 40 inches. Um, it was a conscious decision to go the larger and then also to play a little bit more with um, paint while well, I was doing ink, really gestural strokes, um, rather calligraphic looking, uh, kind of Asian-ish and then adding elements to that. Um, one of the elements, it was kind of funny, um, I was recycling a lot of exercises that my kids had done in my, one of my drawing classases. Mm -hmm. The kids didn't want them, so I go, okay, I'll, I'll draw my, <laughs> so I was cutting them up to throw, in, uh, put into the recycle. And I liked the images that they did. It was a still life study of, right. of objects and jars and bowls and stuff. And I liked some of the graphic um, power of that, so I incorporated You just reclaimed that. <laughs> yeah, I put some of those in the collages, yeah. which I do a lot. The kids will throw stuff around. I go, what are you doing? Yeah. And your parent, you know, take it home to your parents. Yeah. They'll love it. And they go, oh, no. Right. And so like, I didn't use that. Yeah, some of them I go, oh, I'll take that. And I borrow them and cut them up and stuff like that. Well, yeah, I'm interested in the collage form is, is obviously so malleable. You know, mm -hmm. it's, you can do a lot of different things with it. When, when do you feel like, oh, it's done? I mean, that, I mean, that must be an individual decision based on each piece, but is there an overall sense of like, I've gone too far or I haven't gone in far enough? Yes, as to both. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> some of them go, oh, man, I think I should have stopped a couple of series ago. Right, right. And then others like, just go, well, maybe we'll just go for the minimal look. But I, it, they each speak to me, and usually I try and take the attack of trying to work on several at a time. I know a good buddy, um, Tony Askew, does that a lot. Sure. He'll start with and do anywhere from three to five pieces at a time. That way, if you get stuck on one, you know, you can move to the maybe next. Maybe the idea transfers to something yeah. else that you didn't realize. Yeah, and then yet. sometimes I'll just let, it, let a piece sleep overnight, and I'll sleep on it and let it mature in my mind and as a little piece in and of itself you know some sometimes i think they almost have a life of their own or i get into this mode you know the zone where you're not really constantly thinking you're just reacting almost mm -hmm. you're really in the moment and um uh that's really magical and that happens every once in a while but yeah i, I yeah it's everything's different right yeah and yeah. most of the stuff that gets shown i mean i mean there's a lot of pieces that i don't show just because they didn't work out that well <laughs> and they yeah. get chopped up <laughs> i know all about things. that yeah so um yeah it's a pretty organic thing and, and pretty pragmatic and but are you are you generally trying to get a certain type of emotion or message across or what i mean what, when you that viewer comes up against that work of art what mm -hmm. what do you want them to feel in, in general i mean yeah. I know every, everything's specific yeah uh, i I think, well, ideally, you know, a, a sense of our mystery, you know, mm. uh, a, okay. something that maybe they're not too sure about. Um, of course, not all the time does it happen, but um, that, I think, is just uh, that sense of wonder that we all had as kids, I think, and mm -hmm. that kind of slowly fades away, gets jaded as mm -hmm. we go sure, older. Yeah. Um, but hopefully to create that kind of sense or, or, or an inquiry, mm -hmm. personal inquiry, uh, for you to th think about the piece or how that relates to you or how you may relate that to your personal history or to the world mm -hmm. of law. I don't know. There's, it kind of depends. Some, some of my pieces are just more fun and, right. and uh, others are a little bit more serious and others are just more studies into space and juxtaposition and line. Right. So. As you're des describing that, I think it's the opposite of propaganda, you know, <laughs> right? The propaganda wants you to do something specific mm -hmm. and you're, you want to open people up mm -hmm. to all sorts of different mm -hmm. ways of, mm -hmm. of, of, of a mystery. Yeah, of yeah. Confronting yeah. a mystery. I'd love to take a look at your studio, um, Studio sure. 121. And I know um, that I visited you a number of years ago, and, and you were working in your garage. I mean, mm -hmm. you had the you were maximizing the space yeah. <laughs> pretty effectively, yeah. but there was stuff over there, and and that's got to be hard to, mm -hmm. to to work in the garage of your own house. It's I found it okay. My wife was just going up oh, too much <laughs> stuff. You got to get rid of it, clean it up. Yeah, and, and that's a bad thing for someone who does the, the stuff to you. And she's very organized. My my wife, God bless her. And so I'm kind of like the other way, not as organized. And so. Um, luckily, a um, buddy of mine that I went to college with, Mike Irwin, he um, had, has Studio 121, or right across the street from Llama Dog in the Funk Zone, and where the Blue Quonset hut that's there. And he'd been working, he's been working there now for over 30 years. Uh -huh. And so we have a place upstairs, and so I, you know, we're still good buddies, and so 
Oh, since I met him in college, we've kept in touch, and I visit his, vis had visited his studio there many times, and they had an opening. Warren Schulteis, who was there before, a great artist, um, was moving out, and so there was a small space up there, so um, I was invited, you know, if I wanted to, to go in there, and so it was just perfect timing. I jumped in there, and that's where I do pretty much all my painting and, and collage work. Uh, a lot of my paper is stored there. I transfer some of the stuff back home to the flat files in the garage at home. Mm -hmm. And I do most of the assemblage work uh, in the garage still. Okay. Uh, but the, most of the paperwork is all done there at the studio. So is that a place that people could come visit? Or is that, mm -hmm. I mean, you knock on the, <laughs> the closet <laughs> door, and can I see what you're up to? Or uh, not? probably not. Well, Mike's there the most. Uh, during the uh, school year, I try and get there at least once a week to at least mm -hmm. pretend that I'm busy and, and doing stuff. Uh, but we do have an open studio, and it coincides with um, the Funk Zone Art Walks, which mm -hmm. is about every six weeks. It all they all coincide with the uh, Arts Fund uh, openings, and so we open up the studio. Then people can come visit, or if they, if they want, they can make an appointment. To, you know, we can show them around. They can see uh, because there's three art, four artists there. There's Mike Irwin, Gene um, Densel, who does beautiful abstract, uh, floral, and just mysterious. Uh, acrylics on canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, Terry Duffy is also there. She um, and her husband moved uh, in from New Mexico and are living here now. Um, she has a space and she's doing mm, mostly abstract kind of work also, landscapes, um, and then my work um, in a little small room in the back also. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty fun. I mean, we're usually not there at the same time, mm -hmm. um, but it's really fun just to have that interaction. For the open studio. Oh yeah, open studio, it's really fun. So yeah. if, if somebody's watching and they're like, oh, I'd like to go to that, um, when could they, is there an internet site that they could yes go um, there's uh, the f I think it's there's the funk zone you know that has a Facebook page and I think if you type in funk zone funk zone and Facebook okay uh, yeah I th and I think it comes up and then you know if the arts fund is having an opening um, they usually have we usually have an open studio I think the next one's coming up July, mid part of July 16th or 17th, something like that. So we don't, we're not sure when this will be yeah. airing, so uh, just <laughs> check, 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 check online oh, wow. first. All right, so in, in the, you know, kind of in the, the, the last five minutes, we have some, some images of, of more recent work. Mm -hmm. is, is, is your work been changing in the last few years? Um, a little bit. I've been using more, I think the past, yeah, five, six years maybe, using more vintage papers found papers. Um, I did a lot before, but now um, I was teaching a collage class out at um, Adult Ed, and so people were giving me books and stuff, uh, old books and paper and stuff for the class, and I would use as much as I ca could in the class and you know, distribute it to the students. And then um, the rest I'd give to Art From Scrap also, and then I would keep some stuff too. And so I started using a bunch of uh, old book um, covers and end plates and stuff like that. So I'm using a lot more vintage paper and then trying to incorporate that, um, which has made my work a little bit more monochromatic, but I'm trying to, past couple years, just add a little bit more color in there. But uh, so th some of the uh, images uh, that people have been seeing are from those efforts um, over the past you know, five years, mm -hmm. I guess. But. Um, yeah, so that's how it's changed a little bit. And I'm just recently, in the past couple of years, trying to get a little bit larger also. Do you, as a, as a poet, I will sometimes feel like, okay, I've, I've played this turf out, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm done with this thing, and then I'm, I'm trying to push myself to do something radically different. Do you ever, do you ever feel that way? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's a challenge for any artist you know, in whatever field, whether you're a poet, right. writer, a dancer, it's how can you challenge yourself? How can you make it stay fresh, you know, as an artist? And I think that's our biggest challenge. And it could be something as simple as introducing a whole, you know, a little mindset of, okay, I'm going to assume, I don't know. I, I did this one show. In fact, I, it was supposed to be of the mindset of this hoarder or this kind of challenge person trying to express themselves in today's modern world. And, and I don't know. It's, it is a challenge, and I just try and keep it fresh and just try and push myself as an artisan and a crafts person um, and to do the very best that I can. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't, and it's hopefully I'll, you know, I can learn from those failures mm -hmm. also and apply that to challenging myself and doing yeah. some good work. Well, we got about, I think about three minutes left before uh, we're, we're going to run out of time. 
you've been teaching for a long time, and, and I've been trying to reserve the last few minutes of, of every show for um, the artists, the guest artists, to give advice to people who are working in the field. Mm -hmm. So if you look out there uh, to, <laughs> to our audience, what are, what are some, of the, what's, what's some advice that you could, you could give people uh, in the next couple, last couple of minutes? Well, I just in general as an artist, I'd say just keep doing your work. I think it's, it's develop your craft and just keep at it. I think that's the, the main thing. I think the longer, it's, it, it's like athletics. I mean, the more you practice, the better you get. And I think the more you expose yourself to other people, what they're doing around the world, uh, in your neighborhood, the more that you can grow as an artist. Also, sometimes it helps to have a mentor. I, I think all of us, you know, we stand on the shoulders of others who um, have gone before us, and that's, that's a great inspiration for all of us, I think, to have. Yeah. Well, I know as a poet, I'm always inviting poetry students to read more. You take an annual trip out to New York to just sort of take everything in. That, I think that's really important is not just to be entirely enclosed in your own oh. world, no matter how fantastic it is. Oh, definitely. I think, you know, it's, it's that real strange dichotomy of so you could be like a Harry, Henry Darger, you know, his uh, mm -hmm. closet is just insulated. Or, but I think it's to go the other way, it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Have your feet, foot in the uh, world and you know, socialize, get out there, and see what other people are doing. Yeah. Well, um, we got, I think we're just about here at, at the end of the show. One final kernel of wisdom <laughs> that you'd like to throw out there? Mm, well, I would just say um, just enjoy what you're doing as an artist and then share it with your, your fellow artists and, you know, get that feedback and feed off that. And um, that is really important. I, I mean, I, I borrow stuff from and steal from other artists, you know, they're great ideas and from my students too. And that's the big part is, is I think, is stoking your, your passion. Well, thank you again so much for being on the thank show. You, David. It's been a great pleasure. I appreciate it. The Creative Community is a co-production of CAPS Media and TVSB. It's produced here in Santa Barbara with a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Robb Foundation. I'm your host, David Starkey. We'll see you next time.